This past decade, there has been a revival, a resurgence, and a veritable renaissance surrounding the topic of cosmology. Tens of millions of people have done personal experiments, read ancient texts, and found inconsistencies and discrepancies with conventional teachings. By delving deeper into these issues, and exposing hidden truths contained therein, a great number of lies and deceptions have also surfaced, causing a polarizing rift in perspective and paradigm. These people who have endeavored to explore outside the box, or more accurately, outside the ball, are now being labeled flat earthers, and called by many a cult. But is this idea of a level plain earth, and people who advocate for it, truly cultish? What actually defines a cult, cult behavior, cult ideology, and does flat earth fit the bill? Merriam-Webster defines cult as, quote, a religion and its body of adherence, regarded as unorthodox, spurious, or falsified, in great devotion to a person, idea, object, movement, or work. Wikipedia furthers the definition explaining that cults, quote, range in size from local groups with few members to international organizations with millions, and require unwavering devotion to a set of beliefs and practices. Moreover, colloquially speaking, quote, in the English-speaking world, the term cult often carries derogatory connotations. In this sense, it has been considered a subjective term used as an ad hominem attack against groups with differing doctrines or practices. As such, religion scholar Megan Goodwin has defined the term cult, when used by the layperson, as simply being shorthand for a religion I don't like. When considering this connotation, it is no surprise people taught since childhood that heliocentric globe-earth cosmology is the only reasonable, rational possibility, would perceive those who dared consider other alternatives as crazy and cultish. Furthermore, if people exploring different cosmologies found substantial empirical evidence and demonstrable experimental proofs, codified them into books, began meeting together in groups, and started an intellectual movement against the establishment, it is almost inevitable to be attacked and labeled as, quote, a religion they don't like. So if we were only speaking to colloquial connotation, then clearly the concept of flat earth and the recent rise of flat earthers would seem to many like a cult. But the real definition is the denotation, and when considered closely, it is actually the heliocentric globe earth cosmology and its apologist adherents who truly display cult-like behavior. For starters, Literally every modern-day Flat Earther began believing the heliocentric globe model, because it is presented by the mainstream media and education system as absolute, undeniable, gospel truth. No alternative cosmologies are even considered, and students are told that Flat Earth was a false, fringe worldview believed only by our ignorant, ancient ancestors. There will even be a wiki fact-check under this very video, warning you that, quote, Flat Earth is an archaic and scientifically disproven conception of Earth's shape. This is the very kind of one-sided, black-and-white rhetoric found in cults, which stands in stark contrast to the reality of every modern Flat Earther who had to personally overcome and seek beyond such imposed limitations to realize that viable alternatives do exist and have not been scientifically disproven whatsoever. Much like cult members breaking free from indoctrination, anyone becoming skeptical of the globe has to quietly do their own deep research into alternative concepts, deal with crippling cognitive dissonance, overcome generations of groupthink, handle incredible amounts of attacks, denial, and peer pressure, all for committing the seemingly unforgivable sin of exploring and finding validity in ideas outside the group's sphere of influence, pun intended. In this sense, flat earthers better fit the description of people coming out of a cult, whereas globe earth proponents are the ones towing the party line, repeating slogans and claims taught since childhood, and punishing ex-members for daring to question the authority of their dogma. When attempting to engage in rational, reasonable discussion, 
or even when showing empirical, demonstrable evidence against their beliefs, globe earthers almost always resort to sophist tactics like scoffing, sarcasm, insults, and employ a variety of logical fallacies from straw man and ad hominem attacks to circular reasoning and appeals to authority. Very rarely does a globe earther not resort to these reactions, and in my experience, the few who do soon become skeptics themselves. In Zoe Heller's New Yorker article, What Makes a Cult a Cult?, she comments on this phenomenon, stating, The process by which people are eventually freed from their cult delusions rarely seems to be accelerated by the interventions of well-meaning outsiders. Those who embed themselves in a group idea learn very quickly to dismiss the skepticism of others as the foolish cant of the uninitiated. If we accept the premise that our beliefs are rooted in emotional attachments rather than in cool assessments of evidence, there is little reason to imagine that rational debate will break the spell. As Mark Twain stated, it is easier to fool people than to convince them they have been fooled. The globe also has its charismatic, unquestionable cult leaders, like Neil Snake and DeGrasse Tyson, Bill Nye the Pseudoscience Guy, and Carl Millions and Billions and Trillions Sagan. These and other spokespeople, long before them, have been paraded affront the public for generations, preaching the globe gospel, presenting it as absolute truth, and repeatedly denouncing anyone with alternative beliefs. Luckily, however, their facade of authority and claims of incontestability are now being challenged and overthrown. And as Zoe Heller concludes in her article, the good news is that rational objections to flaws in cult doctrine or to hypocrisies on the part of a cult leader do have a powerful impact if and when they occur to the cult members themselves. The analytical mind may be quieted by cult think, but it is rarely deadened altogether. Especially if cult life is proving unpleasant, the capacity for critical thought can reassert itself.